Hunza Valley is one of the valley which is kind of a base camp. Uh, we stayed there for the night, which was long, dreaded night that we have to wait and get rest. Right at dawn, 25 people pack started our journey. There were 10 porters and two guides. And this monster peak, in order to reach the mountains, this big peak, you have to go through a glacier, a glacier on foot. And me being on this rookie adventure, holding, you know, having this 25-pound uh, rucksack and those big shoes of five pound each, it was like a nightmare for me. Just about in two hours, with my uneven pacing in this mountaineer, I was like dead tired already. Around mid-afternoon, on this glacier, we were, we faced snowstorms, wind, and, and it was so bad that we couldn't even see anything. July, snowstorms. At one point, the dense fog separated all of us, and I couldn't see anyone. I felt like Alice in some nightmarish wonderland. One of the guides came through and held my hand, and he saved me. Otherwise, I could have been lost on this glacier forever. I never felt that small and insignificant on the nature before. Um, Around mid-afternoon, later that part of the day, I would become ahead of the whole pack for some reason. So as I was going over there, I found a little crack in there. And without much even thought, I jumped. You should have seen me hanging with my rope in that big crevice. The, the crack which I thought was a notorious 50 feet deep in the crevice. I was luckily attached with the rope with my guide, and we, we, which saved me one more time. Lay, uh, at the end of the day, uh, just before evening, we reached a valley, which is going to be a base camp, uh, right in the foothills of this monster's peak. In this valley, tents were laid out, sleeping bags were out, and the night to spend in this wilderness was just fine for most of us. But for me, a domesticated guy from urban Boston, let's just say it was less than ideal. But I was utterly and completely exhausted with this 12-hour cakewalk. I paid little attention to those nagging voices in my head and put myself into this warm and cozy bed. And lights were out. Right before dawn, I woke up with shortness of breath. <gasps> I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. I look at that John in my same tent with me. He couldn't breathe either. <sighs> I, I, I went, I went to, to open up the zipper of the tent to go outside. And I couldn't. In that traumatic moment, I realized we were buried in snow. Help! Help! Hello! Is anyone there? I scream loud. When our screaming subsided, I could hear the porters were telling me that they were digging from outside. We need to dig from inside. From without the fear of frostbite or anything, we start frantically digging the snow from inside. It was an hour or so. We were totally exhausted and dazed, but we were rescued. That hour or so looked like a lifelong to me, but we were rescued. The snow squalls were, were uh, in the forecast and we knew it was coming, but intensity was not. In fact, overnight when the snow was falling, it buried all of these tents over six feet of snow. Our crew, the whole team, decided we're still going strong to this expedition. For the next whole week, 
We try to scale all those icy patches. We try to climb all those very dangerous moves. But at one point, our leader decided they can't continue. It has become really dangerous. So we came back. That expedition was a failure. But the foggy thing on the glacier, my unadventurous jump over the crevice, and that night in that valley was all near-death experiences for me. I knew for the first time hunger, fatigue, and helplessness in my world. And, but life was not all about for these little luxuries. I actually found three major lessons. Lesson number one. Lesson number one was stepping out of mediocrity. Stepping out of my comfort zone. If anyone would have said to me that uh, Riz, you know, unadventurous guy, no experience in climbing, you want to do K2, I would have said no. And I did. But I did went into this expedition. Stepping out of your comfort zone reveals how much power you have. We, we get into our lives... I was living the same life. When we get into our lives, personally and professionally, we start giving, making it more comfortable and more comfortable. But believe me, this whole mediocrity thirsts upon us, and it was trapped by circumstances we live and breathe. As soon as we step out of our comfort zone, excellence welcome us. One of that bigger achievement in, in out of comfort zone was me. Stepping out of comfort zone after 22 years in financial industry as a banker, as a stockbroker, and you name it. And I have done it all. I found myself that I was not who I was supposed to be. I was not supposed to multiply the wealth of others, but I need to help people find their true passion. I need to multiply their own world. And I did. Lesson number two. A guide. A guide who was very helpful in, in this difficult train to help me save and succeed. He's the only one who actually helped me save from that, on that glacier and that falling into this crevice. The rope was the connection for me in order to stay connected with him. The, in later in my life, in personal and professional life, I seek out and met so many mentors and coaches in order to really find who am I. And they helped me find the true self in me. I, rem I kept that connection live in order to keep finding my survival and my success through it. And lesson three is my John. You probably have your John in your lives. It could be your friend. It could be your mom, dad, your spouse, your kids. Whoever it is, there's got to be a John who's going to push you out of your comfort zone. Who's going to encourage you to take the next step. Because every step is an investment. Every step is take you to the new goal. Every step is a new beginning. If you don't have one, go find one. You need that John in your life. My name is Rizwan Rashid. Thank you, John. You didn't pronounce it well. People call me Riz. I'm a speaker and coach, and I help guide people in order to find that getting out of comfort zone. And I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to say, you know, one of the quotations you always will remember, that life starts at the end of your comfort zone.
Thank you.